Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and today I have a fountain pen that I want to share with you from a company called TNZ. Uh, I was not familiar with them. They reached out to me and sent this pen for review. Full disclosure, doesn't change what I think about the pen, uh, but I certainly appreciate them uh, sending the pen for review. It is, I will say, a gorgeous material. Look at the material of that pen. Of course, we'll look at it a little bit closer here in a second. But uh, it takes more than just good material and a pretty, pretty color to make a good pen. Is this a good pen? Well, that's what we'll discuss as we look at the material, how it's made, the design of the pen, how it functions, and how it writes. And then I'll give you a list of pros and cons. So let's flip the camera and dive right in. Okay, so this is the TNC pen, and I, I know I'm probably sadly butchering that. I apologize. Uh, but uh, this means emperor. This looks a lot like the uh, Temple of Heaven in Beijing, but it is also a dragon. So that is a really cool logo. I think it would be really neat if they came out with a finial design for their pins uh, with that incorporated somehow. I think that would actually be a, a striking thing. The only wording on the box is the same, both sides. And uh, those of you who read and speak Chinese can maybe give us a more accurate translation, I think, than what's here. This says, the view from without losing, body posture exhibition, and then, I don't know, and then handwriting as flowing clouds. Google Translate said, you can observe without losing, uh, you can demonstrate without boasting, that makes good sense, and handwriting like, uh, flowing like the river and floating clouds. That also kind of makes some sense. So a little bit lost in translation there. That happens. Anyone who's ever heard me speak Russian knows uh, something being lost in translation can happen quite badly uh, worse than that. Anyway, here is this very stunning uh, material. I really do like it. And of course, you know, uh, if you watch this channel, that the color and everything here is something I'm going to like. Uh, this is just a simple box that came out. Uh, no information or anything was included in my box. Uh, also, no converter because this is a piston-filled pen. Of all the filling mechanisms, uh, you know, vacuum and piston and cartridge converter, I do love a piston filler. Probably the vacuum is the coolest to me to watch. Just I like the way that works, and they generally hold a good amount of ink. Uh, piston probably comes in second, although, you know, sometimes the convenience of a cartridge converter is hard to beat. Anyway, this is a piston filler pen. I've got it already filled it with ink, so I'm not going to take that apart uh, to show you, but you simply, there's no lock here, uh, but it does fit nice and snug, no issues there, but you simply twist the filler knob here, and of course a piston goes down to expel the air and up to uh, create the vacuum that draws in the ink. Very simple, reliable uh, type of pen. Okay, let's look at the design of the pen. So you have the clip, which is a nice stiff clip connected to the trim ring that goes around between the finial and the rest of the cap, the body of the cap. Then you have this chromed trim ring, which has uh, laser etched the company name and China where the pen was designed and made. And you will notice that the trim ring, at first, it looked kind of frilly to me. I wasn't sure I was going to like that particular part of the trim ring. However, when I took a closer look, I realized what it reminded me of. I think it's a little easier to see when you remove the pen or the pen, yeah, the body from the cap, or the cap from the body, whichever direction that goes. It reminds me actually of the uh, dial of a watch, like a diver watch. And so it's a similar style to that. So it, it looks better when it's a little bit closer. And I thought it was nice. You can see here uh, the translucence here of the material as you look in there. Really beautiful blue. Anyway, so here is the grip section, and it is the same material as is the knob of the pen. Of course, this is a piston filler, so you would twist this. I'm not going to. There's no locking mechanism. Uh, you simply twist this, and the piston expels the air, twist it back, and it draws in the ink, and it has worked quite well so far. 
But I do like that the transition from the body to the grip, to the threads and then to the grip, is a nice short step, uh, almost a noticeable step down. And even though these are sharp threads, they're kind of thin threads, you don't really notice them. Very comfortable uh, grip section to me. And then you have, of course, the nib. And the nib, like uh, the box, has that same logo and the Tanzi name. And I do, I do really like the logo. The... Uh, I almost called it squirreling. I'm not sure what squirreling would be other than running and jumping from tree to tree, uh, hiding your pecans. Uh, but scrolling, I like the scrolling around, but it's you know fairly typical. A lot of pens have very similar scrolling, but it's well done. And the laser etching of the logo is well done. And as you can see, this is a medium nib. It seems to be a standard number six with you know the all familiar plastic feed. I just filled it so you see a bit of ink there. And uh, anyway, nice looking nib. Not anything just, you know, totally out of this world, but they've done a, a nice job. And then, you know, of course, back to that material. Look at, using the big pen word, the chatoyancy of this material. Isn't that nice? Okay, so here is the 10Z pen. That is just a really beautiful blue. Goodness, even just putting that there in the shot, I, I could easily get distracted by that resin. But speaking of beautiful blue, it's not the only one on the table today. Here is the Kaigaloo 316, and of course that is a really nice looking pen. This is the older version. I had the newer one on the way because I wanted to check that out and see what those differences are and the improvements that I've heard about. But uh, just a great pen. I think they favor well. This one is a little bit less expensive, but is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, but boy, the material on this, I just, I really like it. Speaking of beautiful material and a pen that actually costs a little bit more than the TNZ is this uh, Majan now. At the time I bought it, it was called Moon Man. Uh, but this is the M800 in a gorgeous blue resin. And I had the green one, as you know, I've reviewed that pen before. I love that pen. But if you get this one with the bot nib, and, and my bot nib in this pen, by the way, really good. I, I love that pen. And I find the section on that pen to be such a comfortable section to write with. Your mileage may vary, but I love it. Uh, but this pen uh, would be just a little bit more than uh, the uh, the Tianzi. So I think that's a favorable comparison, kind of a, a little bit cheaper, a little bit more, and then it right there in the middle. And then another pen, Harder to find than it used to be is the Galaxy uh, Pen BBS 308, that Galaxy resin. Harder to find. It's my favorite of theirs still. Just absolutely gorgeous. But there are other colors. There is the Jinhao Centennial in the orange. Another pen about the same size and a little bit less expensive uh, and, a, and a really great writer. I would say that this pen fares very well against the Jinhao Centennial, which is saying something because it is a, a great pen. And in this, totally different from all the others, except that it is another chatoyant resin and a large pen, and that is the Birmingham Pen Company, and that is the Eye of Sauron resin and just a knock your socks off orange. I still need to review that pen. Uh, I was hoping that they would come back in stock, but they never have. I think they've changed their plans, and so uh, that's why the only reason I've put that off. But just some beautiful pen. Do I have a type? Can you tell? I have a type. I love beautiful resin acrylic pens, and this one uh, fares quite well in what I consider to be some pretty impressive company. Okay, now, as I sometimes do, I forgot to answer an important question. Does it post? Yes, it does, and it does so securely. No issue there. Makes for a rather long pen, but it does post, and I sometimes forget. Some of you would like to know how many turns to come off, so let's, let's check it out. It is one, two, and just over... Not quite two and a quarter, so just over two turns to get that cap 
off. This is the Town Z. It has a medium nib, and the discerning will have already noticed that it must have some Waterman Serenity Blue because that bottle has been nearby. And you'd be right. I keep a bottle of Waterman Serenity Blue here at the office anymore. I, I got that on a great sale a while back, I think like $5 a bottle or $6, I forget. It was something like that on uh, on Amazon one time. And I've been watching and uh, ready to alert you if it happens again, but I haven't seen it happen again just yet. But boy, am I glad that I caught that when I did. This uh, nib is just really nice and smooth. And I just do really, really like it. Now, it is just a hard steel number six, so there's not like a variation thing going on here. Uh, this would make a great candidate if you like stubs or a flex nib that you might put in there because it is a number six. And the flow seems to be good. Actually, let's, let's do a little bit of that here. Don't have enough ink on my hands yet today. Look at that. So it's, it's inky. Uh, there you go. This is Rhodia paper, by the way. And I just really do like the way that this writes. I mentioned in the other video that a pen friend had mentioned that uh, Paper Mate used to use the name Johnson to demonstrate whether or not a pen wrote. They said that it had all the right turns and, and changes to demonstrate whether a pen was going to be a good writer or not. I think that's interesting. Don't know what other words uh, you may use at different times to demonstrate whether or not a pen writes well, but you know, there is that. I know some people like the word Egypt, and of course there was the minimum challenge on social media a year or so ago. Uh, different things demonstrate different uh, attributes of a pen or a nib. But I find that this does write really well. I like to do even just a little bit of, of gibberish just quickly to show you the flow of the pen. Look at that. Just nice. It just writes so well, and it reminds me of some of those pens that I just showed you because that was what I loved about the uh, the Genhau Centennial pen, about the Kai Glue, about that pen BBS 308. Uh, all of them have number six nibs, steel nibs. All of them write well, uh, smooth, good flow. The ones that I have anyway, I have been very impressed with. So part of my question in looking at this pen over the last couple of weeks has been, uh, how does it compare to those pens? Because uh, this for me is a company that is unknown. Their pen's unknown. I don't know uh, you know, anything about who makes the nibs in-house or what. Um, so I wanted to compare it, especially since its appearance and, and craftsmanship is along uh, similar lines, and I would say even fares quite well with pen BBS. I really would put it near there. Uh, and, that, and its price reflects that. I wanted to know if it wrote as well. Obviously, so do you, right? And it does. It really writes well. So uh, pros and cons. Let me uh, flip the camera so I can look you in the eye while we talk about the pros and the cons of this pen. Uh, the pro for me first is the style. Love the resin. I like that it is a classic shape without just being an outright. Uh, I don't think this is just an outright copy of anything. If it's some, you know, it, it rings a bell of different things, but you know, so does so does everything else, right? Just about. It's uh, it's it's a fountain pen. So I love the style. I think this resin uh, is just it's just gorgeous. And that for me is always a big deal. That clicks a huge 
uh, box on the thing for me. It's very well done. The, the turning of the resin, the polish of the resin, the fitment together is really good. The function of the piston filling mechanism has given me no issues. It has been good. And I did take this apart, clean it first. And so that means I had to get that back together, which, you know, a piston, sometimes getting that aligned so that when this closes back to just the right spot can be a little bit tricky. Uh, and so I did have to do that a couple of times to get it just right. Uh, but excellent. Excellent, excellent as far as all of that goes. How does it write? Well, you saw in the writing test that the nib performs very well. And I did put this through my work paces and my study paces. Uh, all A full day of taking notes for a class. Uh, that This did well. No issue whatsoever. Even though a pen like this might not be your first choice for a day of writing notes, uh, it was great. It was great. In fact, I... I told you, I, I've already had to refill it because I've used all that ink up. Is there uh, anything else that I don't like? I don't think so. You know, one of the things that sometimes a pen will get me is I love the material and I love the overall design, but, you know, the clip then is like doofy or, or you know, the trim is goofy or something like that. There's nothing, there's nothing like that. This is a really nicely designed pen. Function has been just fine. Uh, of course, durability long term on any piston pin is going to come down to uh, how well are those particular parts manufactured. That, I would say at this moment, would be a bit of an unknown for me just because this is a fairly new pin. It's a company I've never had a pin from before. Uh, so I would, you know, expect it to be uh, average, uh, I, I would think. So we'll We'll just have to see. If I have any changes that come along with that, I will note those here. I'll pin a comment if something goes wrong. I've done that with other pins uh, in the long term after a review. So uh, far as that goes, uh, fine. I don't have any big hangnails with this pen. There's nothing that's come to me uh, except, you know, there were no instructions and there's no there's no warranty or anything like that, no warranty card. There was nothing in the box documentation. For a new user who's never had a piston filler, uh, no instructions is kind of a thing. You know, if you're a new user, you're going to have to Google, how do I take this pen apart to clean it? How do I, how do I uh, fill the pen? You watch a video on that or something. Uh, I've got one on piston filler pens. But uh, yeah, that is missing. And I would suggest that that uh, be added in the future if possible. And of course, that, that ought to be possible. Uh, that would just be a suggestion. But the pen, gorgeous pen. I really like it. You might want to check it out yourself. You can find it in a link at a link in the description below. Again, no affiliation to me whatsoever. It's just there for your own information. Anyway, God bless you. I hope that you have a good week. I hope that you stay safe and stay well. And I appreciate everyone who likes, shares, and subscribes because that helps get these videos out to more people who may want to know about some of these pins. Have a great week.